Okay, hey, uh, I'm Andre. I'm a partner with Early Bird. Um, for those of you who don't know Early Bird, it's a pan European early stage venture firm, 25 years around, started out of Germany, now active across multiple offices uh, Berlin, Munich, Istanbul. Paris, London, and we currently deploy a bit more than a billion in the active fund generation across multiple funds. So Early Bird is a family of different funds. And with our Digital West Fund, uh, we were lucky um, to last year lead the Series A of Aleph Alpha. So I'm very excited uh, to have the conversation um, here with you, Jonas. AI, it's uh, the, hot, the hot topic at the moment. Uh, Chat GPT, it's going crazy. So. Tell us a bit about the craze, what, what, what is happening out there. How do you think about the development in the past, uh, what led to this explosion very recently? So I think it pretty much started with these language models, GPT-2 and 3, and they basically do nothing more than understand the structure of language, and that sounds simple, right? Maybe it sounds like grammar, it sounds like autocorrect. And it turns out if you just scale them up and if you are smart about how to build them, they become they, they develop skills that are surprising. So they can, they can solve tasks, they can do knowledge work. And this is, um, has generated some traction and some hype, and we are seeing a lot of application layer companies being created on top of that. We're seeing new models, we're seeing things like stability AI that shows that yeah, almost artistically, uh, seeming, seemingly artistic um, outputs can be generated, and ChatGPT really breaches all kinds of fields, gives you templates for creating a smart contract, um, things like copywriting, right? answering detailed technical questions. And this is really the UX of the future. Right? And it's all based on top of these language models or multimodal models that basically just observe the world without any human input and, and learn the patterns. Yeah. No, and, and for those of you who are not that deep into AI, um, I think uh, looking back, AI statistics back then started in the 1950s, and then uh, we had different kind of milestones. And about 10 years ago, we had this uh, transformation from CPU to GPU, so more compute. Um, and then, obviously, very important uh, paper, and you spoke about uh, transformer models, obviously, in 2017, uh, which, which really brought uh, a new way of, of uh, training these models. Um, so how do you think about these, and you said it already, multi-models, so can you explain a bit what, what do you understand in, in, in terms of these multi-model um, coming from text and going into different areas? And that's one of the stuff that we, we developed uh, in, in Aleph Alpha, uh, that we're still the only company offering that, uh, that is basically, it has the same functionality as a language model. So basically, you, you can do whatever you would do with like a GPT-style model, but you can add any kind of image data to that. So your content can be any combination of text and images. And that's highly relevant, right? Because a lot of our knowledge documents are not just text alone. They're tables, they're images. Um, and so the, this is with like classical GPT-style models you're kind of at a loss here, right? They can't understand these images. So this is currently one of the things that we're very proud of that we invented in Heidelberg. Um, yeah, but in, in general, uh, there are other modalities that will, that will follow, right? It's basically just the, the idea of multimodality is that there are certain different modalities that can carry information. And just the visual domain is just one prime example that we're using a lot, but it could also be other domains. And it had me a bit different, different dimension on that. So you're a serial entrepreneur. You sold your previous company. Uh, you were uh, with Apple um, when you decided to start Aleph Alpha. So what was the motivation behind that? Why did you start this company? Why did you come back to Europe? Why did you start it here? So I was uh, fundamentally fascinated by this technology. I kind of saw this coming on the horizon, working with some of the smartest researchers in, in the field at, at Apple. And I saw this technology and said, well, this is profound. Right? This is not just a tool. This is not just a, an AI that detects faces or pedestrians or sorts spam. But this is fundamentally changing our way of interacting with, with, with systems and with, with uh, computers. And uh, it is progressing so fast, this emergent properties. So yeah, I was technically fascinated by that. I wanted to work on that. And I also found that um, there needs to be an independent company that is not Microsoft's pet, that is not Google's pet, uh, that is capable of, of building the technology what, that the next industrial revolution will be based on. Yeah. And like many, many people 
now I think also to, to the broader uh, broader uh, people community, um, it became very clear what's the potential all across. So we see these application, and you spoke uh, before about the like foundation model. So um, I think it's it's very important to have a mental model in mind how we think about this stack. And essentially, you have um, you need to train these models. So you take lots of data to train these models. Then once the models are trained, you can do the inferencing. So you provide it via an API. And essentially, on the lower part of the stack, you have the um, hardware, which uh, I, I, I'd also ask you a question about. On top of that, you need to train these models, so you need to have the skills to train these foundation models, and then you provide it with, with an API, and on top of this API, you can build the application. Now, if we look into the market, there are actually very, very few companies in the hardware foundation mm -hmm. layer, and it's like an explosion on the application layer. Why is that the case? Well, because it's easy. Where you can basically, you don't need any machine learning knowledge. You don't need, even need to be a very good engineer. You can easily, because you can interact with these models by, by, with natural language, you can few shot prompt them. You can give them a few examples of what you want them to do, and they'll do it. And so everybody, or like almost everybody, can quickly um, pull together these models, uh, these model capabilities, and wrap them in some UX or in some kind of application, right? And not, not only is it easy to do, it's also truly revolutionary in its potential. So these, these applications, they're basically just piggybacking on top of core model uh, capabilities. But of course, the wider audience, the copywriters, the lawyers, the, they, they don't know that, right? They don't know how to interact with a playground on a, on a GPT-3 level. Um, so if, they, if, you, if you offer them an industry-specific, very well-working UX, you, you kind of win a lot of business. Um, yeah, so that's kind of why I think this is happening. So what, what, what we see is that uh, very, very few go the hard way, and you decided to go the hard way to take on the challenge, to really go full stack, and uh, you've, you've built up and operate uh, the highest, best performing um, computing center here in the EU. Um, so you went full stack from buying, building up, and operating the hardware, training the models, having the inferencing, but then also providing the models um, to, to really enterprise applications. So. What's your focus there in terms of enterprise, in terms of go-to-market, industry focus? Yeah, this is one of the reasons why we did this, why we kind of went the hard way, build our own data center, um, trained the model, built enterprise functionality on top, is that um, for enterprises, for governments, and we're working with uh, finance, we're working with health, uh, with, with security critical applications, it's really key that we're not sending data to OpenAI. OpenAI, Azure, they, they have it in their terms, right? They will use your data to fine tune. This kind of rules out, it's fine for playing around, it's fine for consumer stuff, but it really rules out a lot of government and enterprise applications. And with, so we're building the tech stack that is full stack, first of all. We also support on premise um, um, deployment, but also adds functionality like trust and explainability, right? And this is crucial. You, can, you can't go to an enterprise and say, that's a cool model, but in 10% of the time, it'll lie to you in a very plausible way. Yeah, no, I fully, fully agree. Uh, so looking at the time, what's next in the space? So it seems like every week there is a new explosion, there's a new breakthrough. What's, what's next? What do you expect? Where, where will we be in terms of generative AI or more generally in AI in 12, 24 months from now? So was last, last week I was in Europe, so we were presenting some, some results and I had some conversations uh, over beers and um, there's a lot of more money coming into that space. Um, the leaders are further accelerating um, because they want to now revolutionize work. They want to dominate that field. And I had one conversation uh, with folks from Mila uh, whether this will lead to AGI, this will lead to true intelligence. And um, my, Ethan, that I was, I was talking with, said it doesn't really matter whether that leads to true uh, AGI because it is so capable that it'll revolutionize our work and our world and it doesn't need to be conscious. It doesn't need to be true intelligence to change our world. Yeah, and this is what, what everybody is seeing. So I expect these models to further accelerate, get crazy good at what they're doing, um, and then they will change the world. And th this is really f completely independent from the question whether it's true intelligence or not. Yeah. No, and, and we, are, we are, with Early Bird, um, super, super excited to be part of this journey um, to really build up the only European full stack generative AI alternative to open AI. Yeah, that's a, f a phenomenal journey to be on. Cool.
Thank you. Thanks.